Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my favorite novels and novellas of 2022. If you are familiar with the cop pile form that G over Book Roast does, your original rating is done on a 10 point scale and it translates to the five star system. So that means a nine gets you a five star, 914, 929, 943, 971, or a 10. I didn't have anything that was a straight 10 this year, but I have different other categories. So instead of just counting down, these are my top 10, which doesn't include all my five stars. I just figured I'd talk about all my five stars. So you're gonna get more than 10. So coming in at that very first threshold for the five stars, we have Light Chaser, Death by Dumpling, Brimstone, Sisters of the Vast Black, Hunt the Stars, Eclipse the Moon, The Burning Page, and The Giants of the Violet Sea. I didn't have a, I couldn't find a picture icon for this one, so just the name. The novellas here are Light Chaser, and this is a story about a woman who, her job is to go visit a circuit of worlds and to pick up collars where people have been recording memories and then hand out new collars. For her, it doesn't take her that long, but for the worlds that she passes, it's hundreds and thousands of years. After she collects the collars, she can then watch the memories herself, and she realizes that someone is talking to her from these different memories, and it's about her past, but also is going to send out her future as well. The planets and their societies have been tampered with, so they always remain about the same technological point each time. You are given the ending before you get into the story, so just be aware of that when you go into it. The, uh, another novella is Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather, and this is Nuns in Space. And, but they are on a living ship, and they are faced with a pandemic that is not supposed to be happening, and it, the central government does not want people to know about it and they have to decide whether they are going to abide by what the central government wants or by their own conscience. And I really enjoyed it. And then the last novella on here is The Giants of the Violet Sea. And then this is about a woman who has gone home because her brother has died, so she's gone for the funeral. And ends up his death wasn't what everyone thought it was first. And her place and her family also wasn't what she thought it had been. And it just kind of shows that families and expectations are messy. And that's okay. We can still love our families no matter what. For the novels that are on here, I have Death by Dumpling. And this is my only contemporary on here, on this page at least. And this is a murder mystery surrounding food. It follows a woman who works in her mother's Chinese restaurant. The owner of the building they rent uh, ends up dead by eating one of something from their restaurant. And so she's trying to clear her and like the restaurant employees as being the culprits for the death. This is one that I told my mom about right while I was still reading it because I was enjoying it so much and she went and she binged everything that is out so far. Next I have Brimstone by Sherry Priest and this is a historical fantasy following a medium. Well, it's actually two POVs. The first one is following a medium and the second one is following an ex-soldier who is dreaming of fire and it ends up the medium is tapping into this man's dreams. They end up coming together to figure out what is going on. We also have Hunt the Stars and Eclipse the Moon by Jesse Mihalik, and this is for from her new sci-fi romance series. So this is the first and second in the book, or 
yeah, first and second books in the series. And this is one that I can totally admit that they just work uniquely perfectly for me because of the space opera and romance blending. I've done reviews for both of these recently, so I'm going to send you back to those if you would like more information. And the last one I have on here is The Burning Page by Genevieve Cogman, and this is number three in her Invisible Library series, following Irene, who is a librarian, and Irene's apprentice, Kai, who is a dragon, who is hiding the fact he's a dragon from the majority of the librarians, but Irene knows. There's not much I can say about book three, and I'm going to talk about book one here in a moment, so I'm going to leave it at that. Going to our next grouping, I have Prosper's Demon, A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe, The Invisible Library, Terminal Peace, The Winter Bride, Terminal Alliance, and then Pride and Prejudice. My only novella for, on this one is Prosper's Demon, and this was one that Kristen, over at Kristenel, SFF Reader, had just talked about so much that I wanted to pick it up, and it is really great. I am sad that this one was not nominated, actually. It's about a demon hunter who finds a demon that he's been battling for a while and has to play along in order to get the demon in the end and foil everything that is happening. Then for the new books that I read this year, A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. This is a space opera with magic. It follows a couple of perspectives, but one of them... No, it follows two perspectives, sorry. Boots, who is an ex-soldier, who is just trying to live her life and not have to deal with anyone from her past, and yet her past is intruding. And then... Nia? Oh, I forget the other one's name, but she's a race car driver, and she ends up getting in the way of a plot, or like she she witnesses a, somebody dying who she should not have been able to witness, and so now this mysterious organization is after her, trying to kill her, and you know she's proving hard to kill and her and Boots end up getting picked up by people from Boots past and it goes from there where they try to find a long missing ship. I just like the science fiction elements blended with the magic that has a scientific reason for people why people have magic. I thought that was cool. And then we have The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman which is the first book in the same series that The Burning Page is in following Irene and Kai. So Irene is a librarian with what they call the Invisible Library, which is outside of place, time. This is a library that is connected to multiple worlds and dimensions. Irene goes through portals to collect books that are unique for those worlds. Then I read Terminal Peace by Jim Hines, which is the third and last book in his trilogy for janitors of the post-apocalypse, and I just loved how much this book wrapped up that it made me go back and reread the first one, Terminal Alliance, that you see here as well. And that's, for me, a mark of a great series or universe that I've then, uh, upon reading the conclusion, want to go back and reread the beginning. Loved the beginning still. That's why you see that reread on here. I have The Winter Bride, which is a historical romance by Anne Gracie. This is number two in this series, and I just really enjoyed it. I I liked Damaris and Freddie as a couple, and then just as people as well. And then I have my reread of Pride and Prejudice on here. It's still one that I, I love to this day. Going on to the next category, I have five novels and one novella. At least I think it's a novella from the length. It could be a novelette and I'm just getting it wrong. But that's the one thing about short story collections. A lot of the times they don't have the story length. So you're just kind of guessing from it, whether it's a novel or a novella. This one felt like a novella to me, so I have it here. If I find out otherwise that before nominations, I can adjust then my ballot. The one novella I have on here is The Memory Librarian from the collection The Memory Librarian. And this follows 
Sachet, I think is how you say the name, who is part of the order of people who are taking memories that can be troublesome or deviant. While she's taking those memories and trying to keep order, she's not hit a high enough position that she's received her past memories back. But she's like, well, I'm different than who that person was. But she can, she knows now why she had joined the order in the first place. And she ends up meeting a woman that she's interested in. And things aren't all what they seem. I just really liked it. So for the novels, I have The Bone Chips Wake, which was the ending of the trilogy of The Tide Child by R.J. Barker. If you have not read this fantasy series, go read it. It is so good. And when you get to the end, this end book, you realize everything that happens in this end book has been set up from the very beginning, but it was done so well that you just didn't notice those seeds being planted. I then have Root Magic, which is a historical middle grade fantasy. You see twins on the cover, but it's really following the girl as she's discovering what life is now like without her grandmother, who was a big part of her life. It's a coming of age story as she goes to school and is trying to make friends, even though she is different in her community. And then also just realizing how much family does mean to you. And then have How Do You Live by Jinzuburo Yoshino. And this is a Japanese classic that I heard Taylor over made, it, made between the pages rave about. So I read it for May of the Moderns. And yeah, this is just about a boy who is coming of age. And as he's figuring out that the world is interconnected, it alternates between watching his life go and then his uncle writing in a journal to give to him. Just saying, hey, here are things to think about. These are things we talked about. And this is further things to think about what we had talked about. It's, it's incredibly sweet. I hear that there is going to be a Studio Ghibli version of this, and I'm very much looking forward to that. I then have Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. This is her newest one in her series. It is a standalone. Uh, the two books in the series are not sequels. They involve different planetary members of the bigger treaty. And this follows Tinnel and Surit, and they have magic powers that operate really well together. Surit thinks that Tinnel is a willing participant, and Tinnel is not happy about having to sync up, and they decide to fake sync as they then uncover a bigger plot going on. It is a sci-fi romance. And then I have another reread, Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. I read this one originally a year before. I just really like Torin Kerr as a, as a character. She's just so much fun and you get to see the military as it actually operates in a positive light versus the military being the enemy or just incompetent or being shoehorned into any other of those tropes that you think of when you think of the military. In this one you get to see military members being inventive, trying to figure out what they should do as they get stuck in a siege on a goodwill mission. You get to watch them go, we, we don't want to kill people, like, okay, but we don't want to die either. How are we going to solve this? Next, I have four books. I have The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband by Julia Quinn. This is from her Bridgerton prequel series. It's also called the Rokesby series. So like the Rokesby's were neighbors of the Bridgertons. This is the only one where the Rokesby brother does not marry a Bridgerton. And in this one, I forget her name. The heroine is gone to America to find her brother. She got a message that he was sick and she's trying to also escape her cousin who's trying to force her into marrying him. And she can't find her brother. No one will tell her anything. And then she sees her brother's best friend who They've been adding little snippets to the letter that the, the letters that are going back and forth between the brother and each other and the sister. Um, like she's made comments to his friend, his friend has made comments to her. She sees the friend, who is the Rokesby brother, sees that he's injured and says that she is his wife. So if she can get more information. And they end up falling in love. Are we surprised? No, no we're not. I then have August Kitko and the Mechas from Space by Alex White. I actually read this before I read the other one. 
and this made me want to read more of his works. And this follows August and Ardent Violet. August is a jazz musician who ends up getting picked up by a mech and now has to help fight the evil mechs. That's really the best way I can summarize that, but it's a lot of fun. I then have the first volume of Rat Queens, which is basically a D&D &D adventure. And it, it's, again, just lots of fun. In this, the there's a whole bunch of adventure parties are now causing trouble for a town because they've already taken out the majority of the threats. They all get rounded up by the police for doing some town damage and said basically you will do these, do the mission that we're assigning to you or you're banished or exiled from our town. And the Rat Queens go to do the mission and find out it's not what they thought it was going to be and there's a bigger thing afoot bigger conspiracy afoot. And then I have Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. This is the first book she wrote. I reread this after reading Ocean's Echo because I enjoyed Ocean's Echo so much I wanted to get back into her universe and so I read Winter's Orbit and liked it more than I did last year. For me that shows that she's an author that I'm gonna really like over time because her works are getting better as I reread them, and I love rereading. And this is about Kiem and Janan, who are set up to do a political marriage a month after Janan's part, or husband of five years, has died. And then they find out that Janan's husband had been murdered, and Janan is a murder suspect. And they're told this by the resolution representative, who they're hoping will, you know, certify the treaty so then a bigger war doesn't happen. And then for my two favorites this year, and I can't choose between them, is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark and Notorious Sorcerer by Davinia Evans. If you have been watching my channel for a while, you might know that The Unbroken I started in April and then I didn't finish it until June. So it might be surprising to see that it is one of my favorites. It was one of those books that, I'm, as I'm reading it, I'm just awed by the depth of the world building. But it was hard to pick up because everything goes wrong for this main character. Oh my goodness. Like, she thinks that she's saving her friends and it just causes more issues. Yeah. But this is basically a story of her children who were conscripted into being soldiers are now sent back to police the territory that they're from. That's never going to go well. They've been fighting a war for the nation that took them and other places and now coming home. Not everyone wants to fight the people that they're from. And the main character is a lieutenant and she is trying to balance keeping her soldiers safe because now the Kazali don't like them and forgetting the name of the country that took has t taken them over where Luca's from. The country they're fighting for doesn't like them so they're in this awkward middle place. I'm really looking forward to the next book that comes out this year, The Faithless. So that is definitely one of my hyped reads for this year but I love this one very much. And then Notorious Sorcerer is the debut book for Davinia Evans, and it is not getting as much love as it deserves. This is about a world where alchemy is and magic is illegal, but the study of alchemy is okay. It's just, just not using the alchemy powers. And our main character just wants to join this. It's called the Summer Club, and it's an organization of alchemists and class doesn't matter in this club but getting into this club then gives you access to more knowledge. This alchemist ends up doing a higher working with his magic which gets the enforcers hunting for him and then a prince ends up enlisting his help and things go awry there and it's it's a lot of fun. It, this is a lot of fun. It is multiple uh, POVs. We get at least, we get four. We get two women and two men POVs, but I greatly enjoyed all of them. 
and again, this does not have enough people reading it and talking about it and raving it so and raving about it. So if you haven't read Notorious Sorcerer yet, please go read it. But these are my two favorite novels of 2022. I'd love to hear what yours are down below. Thank you and have a great day.